So what if I told you that you could retire in your 30s? There's no way that's possible. That just doesn't seem feasible, right? Believe it or not, there's actually countless people out there who have in fact retired as early as 30 years old. Today we are here to tell you that we are financially independent and have retired <laughs> early. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can go from zero dollars at just 20 years old to being retired by 30. And I'll go over exactly what you need to do to be able to retire by 30 years old. So you've probably seen a video or two talking about the FIRE movement. Which this is something that I have talked about and talked about and talked about. And here is confirmation. If you are the average American with an average salary, you cannot deploy FIRE. You simply can't do it because you don't make enough money. And this guy breaks it down. Which stands for financial independence, retire early. The idea that by saving aggressively through your career, you can reach a point at which your investments cover your expenditures, allowing you to spend the rest of your life traveling the world or doing whatever without needing to work. You'll find plenty of YouTube videos on the topic, sharing stories, tips, and tricks around fire. And while this isn't to discredit people who have achieved fire, the idea of does serve a healthy dose of skepticism. Retirement is, after all, something most of us only expect to achieve in our 60s, and even that is an impossibility for some. A Federal Reserve study from 2019 showed that only 45% of non-retirees in their 60s believed their savings were on track for retirement, with 13% having no retirement savings whatsoever. But advocates argue that by doing some simple math, following important strategies, and abiding by the famous 4% rule, or some variant, financial freedom is achievable earlier than most expect. So is early retirement possible? Well, yeah, actually. But there's a pretty big asterisk that comes with that. Fire is arguably achievable for the average Joe, but there are many misconceptions of what early retirement actually looks like, and likewise, many risks not often explained by fire promoters. That's not to say there aren't positive aspects to the strategy. Indeed, many of us could learn a thing or two from the fire movement. But retiring early probably won't be the 24-7 partying on private beaches you might be expecting. So before you decide to say deuces to your boss, let's go over how you can retire early. And why you might not actually want to on today's Plain Bagel. Imagine what would happen if every person in the United States suddenly visited your website. Would it crash? Not if you built your site on Wix. When it comes to regular retirement, the general idea is to save enough money throughout your career so that when you reach your 60s, you can stop working and live off the amount you've accumulated. This amount is often referred to as your nest egg. And if you know your desired retirement age, your life expectancy, and how much you plan on spending on an annual basis in your retirement, you can actually estimate how much you'll need. For example, if you expect to retire at the age of 65, live until you've reached 95, and you need $50,000 a year for living expenses, then with a few assumptions, you can calculate the nest egg you need to reach by age 65 in this case, $899,000. Of course, the assumptions you use here play a critical role in the calculation, and variables like your investment returns and inflation will likely vary from what you assume. Not to mention this approach grossly oversimplifies the taxes involved. But at the very least, this provides a rough idea of how much you've got to put aside over time if you want to continue your current lifestyle after you've left your job. Also, as a and another thing, this is assuming that you have no mortgage, no car payments, no credit card payments. Right now, there's a lot of people who are moving into retirement with a mortgage. 20, 30 years ago, that didn't happen. People paid off the house and they went into retirement without a mortgage or, protect, or particularly any debt. So it's very different today. A quick aside for this video, I'll be tossing out some hypothetical figures for the purpose of providing a running example. But I have no idea whether $50,000 is enough or too little for your own retirement needs. So don't use these numbers as a basis for your own retirement plan. If you really need help in terms of formulating something for your own financial situation, seek out the advice of a professional. 
Now, just like regular retirement, the objective of the FIRE movement is to build a nest egg that you can live off of. This means quickly paying off any and all debts that you've accumulated, saving money from each paycheck, and investing, typically in passive index funds, to fuel the growth of your wealth. But FIRE followers aim to achieve their nest egg much earlier on in life, often at some point in their 30s. That means a lot less time to reach the needed amount and a larger nest egg required since you'll be living off of it for much longer. To make things even trickier, true financial independence means living off of the income from your investments and not needing to draw on your capital to fund expenditures. So whereas our prior calculation assumes that you deplete your savings by the time you reach 95, many FIRE followers look instead to follow the 4% rule. The 4% rule is something that came from a research paper known as the Trinity Study, which demonstrated that if someone only withdrew 4% annually from their investment portfolio, it was unlikely for them to exhaust their capital over a 30-year period, with investment returns sustaining the withdrawal requirements. In other words, if you're able to live off 4% of your investment portfolio, then your savings should be able to fund your retirement for at least a 30-year period. Now, Early retirement obviously calls for a much longer retirement period. So in practice, many people will actually try to limit their withdrawals to only 3% of their portfolio. The handy thing about this approach is that it could theoretically fund your retirement forever, something that's important for someone looking to spend most of their life retired. And it's pretty simple to figure out how much you'll need to save using this rule, since you simply divide your desired retirement income by 3%. Problem is, it means you'll need a much larger nest egg to avoid drawing on your capital. For a retirement income of $50,000 a year, you'll need to save roughly $1.7 million by your mid-30s. Now, unless you've locked out by starting a successful business early on in life or... Notice how he keeps saying starting a successful business. Hands down, this is the fastest way to get wealthy much faster than investing and much faster than buying crypto or making it big on youtube because your viewers smash the like button and subscribe most people simply don't make enough money to achieve this goal listen to what he just said most people do not make enough money to get to 1.7 million dollars in retirement savings by age 30. This is a point that I have belabored, I have talked about, I have jumped up and down and screamed and shouted it, and folks don't want to hear me for some reason. Even if you are able to earn an after-tax and inflation investment return of 6%, which is pretty impressive, it would require that you save $59,000 a year or roughly $5,000 a month starting at the age of 18. So rather than trying to get rich quick and boost things on the income side of the equation, many FIRE followers look instead to lower their costs through frugality, both during their work years and in retirement. By lowering how much they expect to spend in their retirement, say from $50,000 a year to $25,000, individuals can decrease the amount required for their nest egg, in this case from $1.7 million to $833,000. Meanwhile, spending less now will mean more money from each paycheck that can be put towards this goal. So many FIRE hopefuls will save aggressively when they're still working. And when I say aggressively, I mean it. Whereas a conventional budget may put aside something around 20% of one's salary for retirement, FIRE followers look to bank the vast majority of their income, sometimes as much as 80% of what they bring in which makes sense because even with their smaller nest egg, you'll still need to save roughly $30,000 a year or $2,500 a month using our prior assumptions. And really this aggressive frugality is what makes the FIRE movement the community it is. These saving objectives are tough and people have come together to form forums, blogs, and websites dedicated to sharing these tips and tricks with FIRE hopefuls. There's even a bit of a culture behind the movement with many, although certainly not all FIRE followers, broadly rejecting consumerism and debt in favor of minimalism, placing less value on paid for products and experiences. And quite frankly, there's a lot to be learned from that mindset. Sure, I'm a capitalist at heart myself, 
but most of us will agree that we could all benefit from reining in our spending to some degree. And fire strategies like paying yourself first and eating out less are incredibly powerful tactics for discipline saving that are sure to benefit anyone trying to retire. But there are a lot of people who misrepresent what early retirement actually looks like. As you can see, frugality is at the heart of the approach. And it's something that continues well into your retirement. So you can probably forget about ever leasing a brand new car again or any extravagant vacation plans that you might see other people enjoying online. There are also a lot of risks with FIRE that are often overlooked. For example, while the 4% rule is helpful in gauging how much you need to retire, it doesn't guarantee a lifetime of passive income. Even a nest egg based on the 3% rule is susceptible to market and inflation risk. And if your portfolio experiences large losses early on, it will see its longevity greatly impaired. There are also more personal factors that may throw a wrench in your FIRE plans. Being laid off from your job, a disability that prevents you from pursuing meaningful work, an unexpected expense that forces you to spend more now than you've budgeted for. And while living off of $25,000 a year might sound great on paper, in practice it can be a lot trickier to pull off. Which is why many early retirees actually continue to work. That's right, as counterintuitive as it sounds, achieving FIRE doesn't usually involve a complete exit from the workforce. In fact, I would go as far as to say that the FIRE movement isn't actually about reaching a point where you get to sit on the couch all day and do nothing. Many early retirees still end up working to some capacity after they've left their day job, often taking on a part-time casual role or pursuing passion projects with the potential of making money. But the idea is that they'll have a lot more flexibility to work when they want to work and do what they want to do if they don't rely as heavily on their regular employment income. For some, there's a lot of value in that. Someone who hates their day job may be willing to accept a less frivolous lifestyle if it means they can do something more casual while still paying the bills on time. But the point I'm trying to get at here is that early retirement isn't as glamorous as it's sometimes made out to be. And that's okay. None of this is to discourage fire hopefuls from chasing an early retirement. And if you believe that you have the capacity to reach a sufficient nest egg earlier on in life than most, awesome. But too often I'll see someone promoting fire as something that comes down more to mindset than your circumstance. As though it's something available to everyone. And I personally just don't believe that. Neither do I. Once again, if you're someone making $250,000 or $300,000 or $400,000 a year, it's way more meaningful and possible for you to deploy fire because you have the capital needed. But if you're a regular person with a regular job making thirty dollars or $50,000 a year, you cannot do fire. It's just simply not in the math. Of course, attitude plays an important role. And there are people out there who could greatly improve their financial well-being with some adjustments to their lifestyle. I've seen that firsthand. But FIRE is not exactly accessible to everyone. Where you're born, your upbringing, and the opportunities available to you all greatly impact your chances of achieving FIRE. Again, all the power to anyone who is able to retire early and enjoy the life that they want. And there's nothing wrong with picking up a few tips from YouTubers on the topic. I'll even leave some links to the videos I referenced at the beginning. But be wary of anyone enjoying an extravagant retired life trying to convince you that you can do the same, especially if they're selling some sort of course or product to get you there. So it's up to you if you want to pursue FIRE, but keep these points in mind before you make a decision. FIRE often comes with changing one's lifestyle and spending less than you would be able to at a standard retirement age, since a later retirement means more time to save and more time to let your salary grow. There's also risks involved with relying on a pool of investments to fund your lifestyle. So you may need to return to work to cover your expenses. And of course, there's no guaranteed method for achieving fire. So while attitude is important, you can only do so much within your circumstances. And there's no get rich quick course that will change that. Whether it's worth taking on these risks and downsides it comes down to your own values. I myself am lucky enough to enjoy the work I do, so I'm not passionate about leaving my job early and pursuing fire. But if someone can't stand their job and would easily trade off some discretionary income for less stressful work, that's their decision to make. 
Just ensure that you cover your bases and reassess your position regularly. Either way, frugality is something we can all agree is sure to help your retirement. So even if you don't plan on retiring early, it can be helpful to pretend like you're going to. Live like a student, as some people put it, and use the many free resources available to you to help keep track of your savings and your progress towards this goal. But if you're going to play with fire, be careful not to get burned. Craig wanted me to add that, that's his fault. You can blame him for that one. <laughs> What are your thoughts on the FIRE movement? And is it something you're interested in pursuing yourself? Or is it something that you think is more of a pipe dream? Let me know in the comments down below. Of course, make sure to like and subscribe so that I can pursue my own 24-7 vacation. And check out the Plain Bagel Mug. For now, this is one of the um, surprising videos because it did quite well in the YouTube community which makes me think there are more mature, more practical, more realistic YouTube audiences than all of these kids who feel that they're going to get rich with stocks, options trading, or crypto. Once again, um, this is really interesting because one of the reasons I'm doing this is to highlight that I am not the only one on YouTube Who's saying this? Not even close. And, you know, here's someone who's saying the same exact things I have said. And he's getting tons and tons of views, which I think is great and is really awesome.